Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report, and we have an amazing program for you today. Of course, you know the Monday and Tuesday and Thursday are open line any topic. They are all screened, however, and you do need to tell the board op exactly what your question is or statement before you come on air, because I screen them personally. Uh, they're sent over to me by Skype. So I want to kind of do a little bit of review of what's happening. I just recently listened to an interview on Coast to Coast Radio with a uh, three uh, different, quote, experts on different aspects of the uh, Fukushima Daiichi disaster. And uh, a lot of the information was very good, but there's a couple of areas in which uh, they specifically need to be uh, corrected. Um, the first is the uh, comments by Arnie Gunderson uh, that the first 90 days was most of the, quote, radio iodine and that, that basically is gone. Uh, let, let me explain how the physics works. Uh, what happens is this is physiochemistry. When you have a nuclear reaction criticality, you're generating continuously new radioiodine and new short, uh, which is two-year, not, not 39-year, uh, radio, uh, which is called cesium-134 and then also 137. If you show up 134, it means you have new criticality occurring. Uh, the level of radioiodine has not dropped. It's actually gradually increasing because the criticality is increasing, but you're getting a, ri a more rapid rise of cesium and strontium because of their half-lives, and it's really simple. If you have something with a half-life of eight and a half days in four half-lives, if you stop the trickle or the explosion or the, the fire hose, if you want to call it, of radioiodine generation, which is a daughter of nuclear criticality, you're going to... Um, have it drop off pretty precipitously within a month, it's basically gone. But it's not going to be gone because the criticality is continuing and ongoing and increasing. The, the thing that happens is you get bioaccumulation in the environment because the long half-life of cesium-137 and strontium-90, which basically takes about 150 years, 160 years for it to clear four half-lives. So that your levels are going to quote, go vertical after a certain period of time, and this is based on simulations from uh, nuclear simulations done in the 90s, I'm very familiar with them. Uh, there's two reasons why you take our new triodine, which is completely different from taking any other form of iodine, including potassium iodine. Firstly, it's not a diatomic Tesla activated iodine, which the body has to make to make new mitochondria called mitochondriogenesis. Number two, it doesn't coat all the uh, cell membranes to protect it against pathogen entry. And number three, it's not a cofactor. The diatomic form is for bioconversion of sex and stress hormones. All others are pretenders. They do not have this effect. Uh, they're not antipathogenics against viruses, bacteria, fungi, mycobacteria, parasites, etc., which neutriodine is. And it's not just blocking radioiodine, it is killing off pathogens because when your immune system gets weakened, and I went over the physics a bit on uh, the Thursday evening show on the first half hour on Rents Network when I was on hour number three uh, last week. Uh, here's how it works when you get exposed to radiation, you strip electrons from tissue. When you strip electrons from tissue, it becomes acid. Uh, all radiation does this, whether it's cos cosmic rays, x-rays, uh, alpha particles, gamma, or gamma rays, beta particles, which is high-speed electrons. For example, strontium uh, degrades to yttrium, and strontium is a very high-energy beta particle emitter. In fact, the electrons emitted are so powerful that when it even hits lead, it creates x-rays. So, in fact, the radiation level, uh, you cannot even put someone who has, say, strontium poisoning into a radiology unit to do testing on them because the, uh, radio, the lead shielding around the uh, workers and the other people actually will generate more x-rays because of the high-energy beta particle emission. So, uh, one of the things that will block both uh, neutrons, which is the other high-energy particles that are present, and the reason why Fukushima is particularly nasty is because they were doing, uh, had a MOX reactor 3, which is making plutonium, which is specifically made for MOX reactions. Mixed oxygen fuel are actually used for making plutonium detonators for nuclear warheads. So Japan was in collaboration with, China, with uh, uh, Israel to make nuclear detonators and to make their own nuclear system because they have a very advanced uh, uh, satellite um, payload delivery system. The Japanese have probably got the maybe the second best in the world uh, in terms of delivery and uh, second to none. The Ariane rocket system, of course, in, in uh, Europe is very good. The Russian systems are excellent. They're, the, I think, right now at the top. Uh, so uh, they're either number two or three. So <clears throat> the first thing I want you to understand is what Dr. Uh, Busby has said, which is that it's less than Chernobyl and what now Arnie Gunner has said is incorrect. 
Uh, there's still radioiodine coming out, but there's a heck of a lot more cesium and strontium. Now here's what happens. Strontium-90 goes directly to your bones. If you don't have adequate calcium, it zips in there because it's more energetic, faster than calcium. It goes to your bone marrow. It goes to uh, the areas where calcium is, which is through the calcium channels to regulate calmodulin A and B, and phosphorylase, which actually regulates the main primary enzyme activation in your cells. So it's kicked out of the cells, and uh, for every calcium ion that's let in through ion channels, there's 10,000 magnesium ions. And if your body's magnesium deficient, uh, you can't maintain the ion channels because you can't maintain glutathione peroxidase and ion physiology. That's why we have products such as magne magnesium glycinate malate, magnesium torate, magnesium potassium citrate. The magnesium glycinate primarily is going to go work on the uh, uh, total body magnesium and the mitochondrial. The magnesium torate works on the heart and the central nervous system primarily. And the magnesium potassium citrate will be an electrolyte replacement, stopping muscle cramps and getting your potassium magnesium. And if your magnesium is not adequate, you can't even hold on to potassium. Now what happens is when calcium comes in, it damages those ion channels. <clears throat> it also damages the cellular membrane of those ion channels of mitochondria. And you end up with mitochondria sending out what's called a death signal. So other mitochondria start to die and the cell loses its energetics. It becomes more and more acid. It results in the cell basically stop making new mitochondria and the cell and tissues don't repair their own organelles. Eventually you end up with stealth pathogens, accumulation of heavy metals and biotoxins, and of course most radioisotopes like cesium and strontium are heavy metals. Uh, plutonium with a half-life of 24,900 years. Uh, depleted uranium has half-lives in the range of billions of years. It's one of the few things, believe it or not, is used as a ballast in, in small aircraft, etc., and helicopters. It actually will block neutrons. And in fact, if you lined a container at Fukushima Daiichi or a tunnel system underneath the uh, area, uh, which would be a part of a corium catcher, uh, you would block the neutron, neutron flux. And what happens is uh, the plutonium that was generated there uh, in the reactor is what's called a spontaneous neutron generator. And that spontaneous neutron generation is going to cause criticality, which will cause more of all these isotopes, literally dozens of them, uh, and all very dangerous, all affecting different parts of the cell. Now, the reason why you take nitriodine is you're doing what's called mitochondrial rescue. We have, of course, Nutritrella, cell detox glutathione, Regenerex, cell defense. We have uh, nutraceuticals to repair the cell membranes like Nutrafos, Omega Supreme Krill, uh, Neurogen, uh, Omega Cod Liver Liquid, uh, with very important carrier molecules. And so of those all, they're really important. The Omega Cod Liver Liquid and probably Nutrafos are the top two. Uh, what's happening is that the population are being poisoned. Uh, we see death in the oceans. They try to minimize it. It's not due to methane hydrate surges, which we are having and have had for the last five or ten years. Gradually increasing uh, methane hydrate surges in the oceans, bubbling up. There's also the uh, methane hydrates coming up from the permafrost. But the fact is we're heading into an ice age. Now, these extreme climate that we see in the southern hemisphere, where it's literally a furnace down in Australia, reaching record temperatures and the uh, Arctic, what's called vortex weather systems, are part of the disruption of the normal um, jet stream, which is normally at 60 degrees uh, uh, northern latitude, not 30. And as a result, it's pulling cold air down from the Arctic to the lower United States, especially the Central Plains. We here in California are uh, unusually balmy and are very dry. We have had very little water whatsoever. In fact, it's a water crisis. And the same way uh, that sweeping area southward goes across Texas, which is why their drought is getting worse, not better. Uh, our problems are being amplified because the globalists don't want to address the issue of Fukushima Daiichi. They don't want to address the issues of the corrects that's still being used at the Macondo drill site in the, in the Gulf of Mexico. And uh, they have geoengineered the upper atmosphere that's causing further problems with ultraviolet light damaging our oceanic phytoplankton that generate 80% of our world's oxygen. So when we come back, we're going to talk about this more, and I'm going to add some more news of what's going on in your world. Your question is 800-259-5791. go anywhere else to get the best nutraceutical solutions for your health and wellness and of course we have 
an amazing array of new technologies, as well as ability for you to have self-directed testing. Uh, we have, of course, the QRMA, which I tell people is an awesome deal. It's just for you and your family, not friends, not relatives, distant relatives, or setting up as a business. If they want to get a machine, they should get it from us, they, and I will do interpretations as part of the arrangement uh, for you to tell you which nutraceuticals will work best with the specific issues. We usually want that along with a, a wellness history we, or just a conversation on the phone, and all the consults, by the way, for all our customers are free. Phone and email consults. No one else does that. I will review uh, tests like the following. You go to directtest.com. There's all the major functional medicine labs in America uh, and the Western world. I can tell you what tests to order. You can order them yourself. Uh, their doctors will sign off. They can send reports to you, and I can have a look at those in interpretation along with your QRMA and other testing. We have, of course, a detox diagnostic and therapy machine. We found a supplier now that has the uh, patent rights and the software for the 3D NLS. Those are now available. Uh, which is the Russian uh, Space Agency research uh, device that will actually section organs. It's actually been tested in, uh, in various forms of things like cancer and other diseases to actually anatomically locate them and even tell the diagnosis and even tell you the efficacy of therapy. So by far the best first machine it takes a minute to do the test at home. Many of the panels of the tests are fairly straightforward, like your vitamin mineral levels, uh, organ function, etc. Some of them are quite uh, more difficult to interpret, but if I have a history, I can tell you exactly what will work. You can uh, repeat the test, and it's very simple and straightforward. Uh, and I wanted to switch gears into the news, and of course, recently we had uh, the uh, a remarkable interview uh, talking about uh, uh, the death of Ariel Sharon. And again, this was just a very recent that we went over this issue. Uh, Ariel Sharon, of course, uh, just to give a little bit of a history, uh, in 1999 I had uh, traveled to 42 cities in Israel with the Prophecy Club. That's three tours. Um, we also published in that year uh, two books, the book Clay and Iron, a fairly large book, several, about 300 pages, and Abortion to Armageddon, about 150 pages. I donated all the proceeds to the, the Prophecy Club ministry uh, except for just my expenses to travel. I didn't ask for anything more. Uh, I prayed, and that's what I was supposed to do. We uh, were on Prophecy Club radio and television, and uh, that was, in a sense, probably, in a sense, the start of my major ministry. I'd done a lot of pro-life work, uh, both U.S. and Canada, for years before that. And in 1999, when I spoke in Dallas, Texas, to uh, Hayseed Stevens, uh, he asked me to join him at the Whataburger, in Dallas uh, with his wife and uh, to discuss the fact that he'd been back and forth to Israel under the auspices of Ariel Sharon uh, to open up the uh, largest batholith of oil on the planet at the southwest ends of the Dead Sea at the uh, Makondo drill site which is the god of the breakthrough. Uh, I'm sorry, the, uh, what's called the uh, Elihim Perazim, get them mixed up, Elihim Perazim. The Elihim Perazim is the god of the breakthrough uh, uh, drill site and it's at the uh, basically at the base of a 26,000 foot high salt dome that goes down deep into the earth. That salt dome cops off the, one of the largest batholiths, uh, which basically is a giant ocean of oil. Uh, and the fault line runs all the way from, uh, from uh, Turkey all the way through to Lake Victoria in Africa. And that fault line is actually uh, one of the largest fault lines on the planet. And uh, they calculated out uh, FICO, their engineer, that the uh, large recent destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah in the Bible was caused when the oil batholith struck the magma and there was a large explosion equivalent to 500,000 Hiroshima's at least uh, that threw uh, much of the debris of the Dead Sea into space that circled the planet uh, and that's why we see the, the uh, reports of the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah it was the well watered valley of Sidim. FICO discovered all the oil fields in uh, uh, the Sinai Peninsula, all the gas fields in Zohar which is uh, just uh, west of the Jordan River, a little north of the Dead Sea. Uh, and uh, when I described to him and uh, uh, the geology, which I had been shown supernaturally, of the southwest end of the Dead Sea, that uh, after I had shown it to, told it to uh, Hayseed Stevens, he said, there's no way that you could have known this except supernatural. So they flew me to Israel to sp say a prayer at the blessing in Hebrew at the southwest end of the Dead Sea at the... Uh, uh, Elohim Perizim drill site on the feast of Yom Teruah, which is the uh, feast of the first or the head of the new year. So <clears throat> the uh, uh, 
situation with the death of Ariel Sharon is very interesting because he had told them, and I'd warned them, uh, both uh, uh, Stan Johnson of the Prophecy Club, Hayseed Stevens, that they should not open this up. And basically, I got lots of offers, money, this or that, ministry. Uh, and I said, no, the prophecy is you will not open this field up until it's the appointed time. Uh, oil will precipitate a massive invasion because it's the largest supply of oil and gas on the planet by far. It's the largest bathless on Earth. The second largest one <clears throat> is in the uh, Prudhoe Bay, uh, what's called the Victory uh, Site Drill Site, which is up in north of Alaska and the Yukon Territories and in, uh, international waters and basically U.S. Canadian waters. And the second and the third largest is a bathalist in the Yucatan Peninsula, which is the area that the there are several lar- large connected bathalists actually there, uh, which connects to the oil fields in Mexico. So <clears throat> these bathalists are basically oceans of oil. They're created by nuclear reactions. It's the old gold theory that goes back to the 50s. It's been conclusively proven. There's no such thing as fossil fuel. You can make coal and so on if you want to in a lab, but to be honest with you, uh, they know that when you go down 40,000 feet, you're not getting uh, dinosaurs. Uh, this is silly. It's ridiculous. And the amount of uh, what's called teramoles of uh, energy generated even just in a cubic uh, mile, it's impossible for all the ancient world to create these things. It was created by a nuclear reaction that catalyzes the enlargement of molecular species, so you create heavy oils, light oils, etc., gases. That's well known. It's been known for 60 years, so this is nothing new. It's been suppressed specifically by the oil industry because they didn't want people to know how much oil and gas was out there, uh, number one. Number two, um, <clears throat> as you produce carbon dioxide, the oceans will, if you don't pollute them and destroy them with toxic chemicals or uh, high levels of radiation caused by engineering the, the upper atmosphere called geoengineering with nanoparticle thorium, barium, and aluminum, uh, which causes a breakdown in the ozone layer and causes UV a burning of the upper benthic layer of the oceans, that's B-E-N-T-H-I-C, uh, you're going to have enough, um, you've stretched in the system to the body, that the body of the wor- world, 80% of the oxygen comes from the oceans, can uh, recycle it, and the carbon oxygen cycle works fine. Now, where I'm going with this is that uh, the strontium and cesium are going to start significantly decreasing the amount of phytoplankton and break the food chain in the Pacific Ocean. But the, uh, the coastal oceanic currents carry that water to every ocean on Earth within 26 months. So the spike in strontium cesium that we're now going to be seeing here in the next few months across the California and the western coast will hit every coast on Earth in 26 months. Now, what does that mean? It means that the world oxygen concentration is going to drop. It means that as the uh, level of oxygen drops generated by the oceans, there's less oxygen in the upper atmosphere to be oxidized by ultraviolet light to protect us at the ground or our other trees and food from irradiation. So if you don't have enough oxygen, you need three things to create an ozone layer, a strong magnetic field, enough oxygen in order to be turned into a triox compound that protects and absorbs ultraviolet radiation, uh, and uh, you need to have a, a magnetosphere, basically, to do that. If you don't have these factors present, your ozone layer is destroyed. And if you have chemicals up there like xenon and krypton that are released by Fukushima and other isotopes such as radioiodine, uh, they chew up the ozone layer as well. They have to amplify that reaction. And if you put nanoparticle barium, uh, thorium, and aluminum that are there to protect her by deflecting a coronal mass ejection, which is what I was told by Dr. Isley in 1997 that the World Constitution Parliament Association founder uh, for the United Nations has spent an entire evening with me explaining the physics in exquisite detail because he knew I had security clearance at U.S. Space Command, Strategic Defense, and Star Wars, and I uh, knew the specifics, so it was like he was just talking to one of his colleagues. Well, the fact is you're going to hear scientific detail here that's going to clear up a lot of misinformation. You need mitochondrial support and protection. You need detox. You need to protect yourself <clears throat> and your immune system from suppression, which can cause this plague of H1N1 flu, PH1N1, which is a D225G, S226R, very deadly flu, and the H5N1 that could even cause encephalitis, from getting you or your family. Back in a moment, your questions, 800-259-5791. Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report. And just want to throw some uh, topics out. Can remember, the first hour, Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday is open lines. In fact, it's going to turn out that we're going to have this open lines, any topic for hour three today. Coming up tomorrow... Uh, We have an hour three, Dr. Mike Kaufman, our environmentalist, talking about all the environmental issues that are happening now. 
And of course, the uh, U.S. government is racing ahead with this international trade treaty. Trade is only five of the 25 chapters. The rest are going to hamstring the U.S. public and basically make the Congress, Senate, and the uh, city councils and local counties as vestigial. Basically, vestigial means like your appendix is vestigial. It really doesn't serve very much in our current function. Uh, Dave in Oklahoma, you had a question. Um, go right ahead. Yes, Dr. Deagle, uh, you mentioned a while back the uh, rebuilding the meniscus in the knee. Yes. And uh, I believe you said that the, uh, you needed Red Mountain, Deer Velvet, Collagen Max. And did you also mention uh, something about that new formula you're working on for joint tendons? That'll be uh, out probably within about a week, week and a half. Um, those are the three key ones. Uh, there's a few others that you can add in there that have, will have effects. And energetic technologies such as Lumen Photon, Soma Pulse. Uh, the first thing is you got to understand what is a joint. And, of course, a joint is not only the cartilage at the end, which is a thing called glycosaminoglycan, and the proteoglycans are hard molecular weight molecules that require methylation. They require the building blocks and all the cofactors and growth hormones. Uh, you want to, the rate limiting step is collagen, and it's the uh, proline transhydroxylase enzyme that's regulated. Our uh, orthosilicic stabilized uh, silicon, it's not collagen, triples the rate of the reaction at least or more uh, if you just take one twice a day. We recommend the use of the mountain red velvet at least three twice a day to rebuild the cartilage. And we have a new product now that's coming out. It's going to be called Joint Performance. And it's a new um, high molecular weight, super high absorbed form of uh, rebuilding the joint surfaces. Uh, and that formula will be out here very shortly. Uh, we also recommend anti-inflammatories and Flamex because a lot of time inflammation is part of the, uh, we call the disturbed or abnormal healing process. So Inflamex will also help. <clears throat> Energetic technology. Uh, you can use one or both of Lumen Photon light therapy, which increases circulation, uh, increases energetics and oxygenation of the tissue, and soma pulse, which actually stimulates stem cells to regenerate up to 400%. Uh, but we have very powerful technologies. If people have eburnation, which is bone on bone, I recommend you get your doctor to do a Hylan, H-Y-L-A-N injection, which is made from rooster combs. It's a 3 million molecular weight uh, hyaluronic acid polymer, and it allows you to have some buy some time while the cartilage usually migrates in from the margins of the edge. So if you do a, uh, a CT uh, myelogram, or sorry, a, a, a MRI uh, arthrogram, and you put arthrographic uh, dye into the knee joint, you can actually see the cartilage growing in from the margins. Or if you put a scope in there and actually oh. scope the knee. So you'll actually see, and I've had orthopedic surgeons that have sort of been skeptical, and I told them, this is what you do, and they get all excited because it doesn't alter their practice. They still need to do, say, a meniscal repair, but they don't need to go in and, and you know terrify and rip the whole joint apart. I think part of the solution to the healthcare problem is all Americans should have health care. You don't have to have insurance. And you pay doctors because they're an orthopedic surgeon, whether they cut or not, or they spent time making sure your knee is in top shape. Uh, as soon as you operate it, you change the body's biomechanics. You put a foreign object in, which often causes infection. Uh, every year, uh, there's 50,000 people just with Medicare that have horrifying complications, and upwards of 5,000 die just of knee replacements. Uh, so it's you know that we're not even talking shoulder, which are really bad because they scar down like crazy. The only reason why you do a shoulder uh, is to try to get increased, decreased pain, because statistically, if you look at a large population, there's no improvement in range of motion if you do a shoulder uh, joint replacement. You can do them in the hands. That's usually pretty good. Uh, the fingers and hands work out pretty well. Uh, knee replacements, they're better, but there's a lot of people who react to the oils uh, or the machining um, materials or the alloys in these, and a lot of them <clears throat> don't proper interdigitate between the appliance and the connective tissue in the bone so that they become uh, unstable. And if they don't stabilize or interdigitate with the, with the uh, hard tissues, uh, then you're going to end up with uh, disruption and micro tears of the cartilage and the connective tissue around the knee joint, and eventually uh, the knee will fail. So is it, it is possible to, to heal that knee without having to get a doctor go with their work on it? Right. What do, you, what do you want to do is you want to do repair of uh, things like if there's a partial meniscus tear like a bucket handle or if there's fragments and then you want to wash them out of there so they don't have fragments to calcify, and you want to do all the repairs necessary, and if you have to do a partial ACL repair, you can do a, a ligament transfer from, say, your Achilles or somewhere else. But you try not to uh, rush in to do a you know, full or partial knee replacement if you can try to regenerate and get a hydroviscous layer in there. Okay. All right. And one other thing, too, uh, Alex Jones was talking today on air that 
he had something eating at him very deeply that he suspects that we may be going into some sort of a false flag event with the Chinese military in order for uh, the U.S. government to turn on the American uh, tr- American people. Do you see anything like that in the coming future anytime? Uh, no, and, I can, I'll give you the specifics as to why. Uh, the first thing is that, uh, uh, number one, if uh, it's like Charles Salenti says, who I consider, if you, if you, you you've got to get his, uh, his, uh, <laughs> his journal is one of the best. I say it's way better than any other magazine, it's Trends Journal, and it uh, uh, comes up four times a year. He also has his Trends Report every week on, on videos. And again, he's a um, black belt, uh, closed combat martial artist. Uh, he's a little guy, but I wouldn't want to tick him off because he'd probably take you down in about 35 seconds, no matter how big you are. Uh, and it wouldn't matter how old he is either because he's in top shape, and that's what you need to be. You need to take care of your body. You need to be able to defend yourself, whether you have a weapon or not. Uh, but he tells people he wants to defend people against stupidity. We need to have excellence in America. We need to be creative. Uh, we need to get back to a constitution. Now, I know if you get particulars, and I just get lots of great emails, uh, America is a corporation. It, it always has been. It's always been a vassal of the King George, going right back to King George of England. Uh, you know, back in, uh, it was, I'm trying to remember, around a thousand years ago, the uh, Pope even kicked the crown off of the King of England to say, hey, well, you're a vassal of me anyway because I coronated you. In other words, all of the property and all of the people who belong to countries like that are former Commonwealth nations, and there's 57 Commonwealth nations, by the way, um, all of these nations, their citizens are basically slaves and their money system is a proxy system. But here's what the real issue is. The Constitution isn't just a written document or a fabrication or a fraud. It's something that people believe in. Mm-hmm. And you can chip away the, the, from the courts of law the Ten Commandments, but you can't take it away from people's hearts. So as much as these devils will play all kinds of quote, legalistic games and try to strip the Constitution, the same with their healthcare care system. There's real doctors that went into medicine to help pe- make people better. Uh, uh, and this is a very important, uh, uh, very important that people understand that. So, uh, you know, I'm trying to bring out information on, on a lot of different fronts that tells you if the fraction of time I can get out there and dig up these things tells you that there's a solution to every problem. Just like one of my favorite scriptures is that in the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. There's a molecule on God's earth that can heal every health condition. And if you don't have a solution, you submit it to God scientifically geopolitically and otherwise god will give you an answer whether it's fukushima daiichi or cancer or heavy metal toilet poisoning or near space objects or any other issue there is an answer out there okay well all right then. Uh, uh, you're welcome man you call me anytime by the way all the consults phone and email are free to our customers rich in pennsylvania had a question about the 3d nls go ahead yeah hi bill i'm trying to figure out the mechanism that uh, 3D NLS uses, does, does it work on the auricular acupuncture system? Is it no, uh, no, no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. It works on, it works on what's called, uh, uh, it works on what's called thermodynamics. And basically, uh, everybody, let, let me explain what living tissue is. And this is part of my book on quantum functional medicine. And I'm bringing it out now, even though I know that there's a potential for them to use some of this technology to weaponize it, because the people need to know that this is what living things are whether it's a person or a leaf or your dog or any living thing all living things <clears throat> have got cell membranes where there's the uh, electro potential difference caused by pumping ions out from one side of the to the other and there's ion channels and uh, what happens is every tissue in the body forms what's called a frequency dependent harmonic circuit and those harmonic circuits absorb and release energy in specific spectral or frequency patterns that turn on and off genes and just conduct and control all structure function and tissue structure and size. So your eye is not a size of a pea or a dinner plate. When we come back, I'll continue with Rich. So, I find out that these things the hard way. Medical report. Rich, you, you had a question about the 3D NLS. Uh, I posted up a paper there that shows if you have cervical cancer, you can actually map out where the uh, cervical cancer is in the pelvis. You can map out where secondaries are, 
and it actually does anatomical sections. So um, it can even tell you the efficacy of any uh, a drug and or nutraceutical care in terms of its thermodynamic properties because the body is basically a series of hierarchical, uh, if you want to call it frequency dependent, if you want to call it computer codes. So in other words, you're built like a hierarchy of computer codes. So there's a series of code, and I actually presented this to a panel of biophysicists, this theory using uh, uh, quantum energy transfer equations uh, back 30... Two years ago, 32 years ago, uh, to a panel of biophysicists at the University of Calgary, because I was practicing there at the time and doing my research on the side, and uh, I worked on what's called phonon maser biophysics. And uh, phonon masers are uh, frequency uh, dependent uh, gene switches in the cell membranes that are dependent on the frequency of biomolecules in solution, because water is, a, is an informational superconductor. Uh, collagen is too along the phenolic side groups. They actually are the highest speed transmission of uh, biophotonic energy it is the phenolic side groups of collagen in the body. It's the super, if you want to call it like the fiber optic supernet of the body, uh, which is why uh, collagen is uh, so important in the fascia of the body and it can, in the uh, intracellular high speed uh, phonon, uh, if you can call it windows, like the tight junction, which is four angstroms, actually allows signals so cells. When they lose that tight junction, it's the first sign that the cell is going to go rogue and become cancer. So if you could do an electron microscopy, you'll see the disappearance of tight junctions occur with other genetic changes. So a cancer cell really is a cell that's healthy, believe it or not, not unhealthy, a healthy cell that decided it's been aggravated enough by its central government, if you want to call it the body, and being toxically attacked by pathogens and heavy metals and radiotoxins and electrotoxins, it's going to turn on its telomerase so it will not die. It's going to turn on specific genes to literally, you know, prep up and become like a special forces cell. So that's what cancer is. Um, if we don't take that approach to cancer, we're going to fail. And the idea that we take the approach of commandos, it's like, okay, we're going to knock off all the grandmothers and all the children, but these cancer cells are like becoming super strong. So when you do a course of chemotherapy after the first course, if you haven't killed them off, you've killed off what I call the Wally cells, and the Arnold Schwartz cell survives. Well, the 3D NLS is, uh, follows the QRMA, which will tell all your vitamin, mineral, nutrient, toxin, every organ system balance, and you combine it with a wellness history and test like 23andMe that can measure 250 genes, and I'll interpret those and tell you from the raw data because I can't give you an analysis now, or direct tests that can take labs like Doctors Data, Genova Labs, uh, Great Plains Laboratory, uh, antibody assay reference labs, and other immunological labs like Immunosciences in Los Angeles. And I can uh, put those together because I've been doing this for decades and analyze it and tell you what you need to do, whether it's a child with a, quote, a genetic organic acid defect, uh, an adult that's developing a specific okay. illness like a cardiomyopathy or dementia, or a person that's developed chronic fatigue syndrome because they've got a cytokine elevation of interleukin 1, beta, TNF, alpha, etc. So uh, believe it or not, I can do all that. Okay. And I've been, well, at a long, I've been at a very long time, so I'm one of the professors that teach doctors in the Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine, Environmental Medicine, and uh, Advancement Medicine. And uh, uh, I present, I'll present. i be presenting some papers this year to the academies. Uh, my abstracts will be coming out in the next few weeks to the American Academy of Environmental Medicine and the American Academy of uh, Anti-Aging Medicine. I'll be sending those off to the uh, academies in the next few weeks. Okay, is, is it a headset that you put on and you... Yeah, you put a headset on and it, it looks like a stereo headset, but it's not because you don't hear any sounds. And uh, what it does is you'll actually see, if you do, there's three levels of studies, like a brief or express, a standard, and then, then a really advanced. The really advanced one will actually go down to a specific hours. cell. Yeah, it takes about an hour and a half, actually. And uh, when it's done, it actually will, you can hear the sounds, you can actually see the icon show up in different parts of the cell even, right down to the subcellular organelles. It even takes out and tells you which arm of the specific chromosome is involved. I mean, it really is mind-boggling. It's like you're stepping into the 22nd century. Now, can, yeah. can I purchase that alone, or do I have to have it with the QRMA? You have to have the QRMA first. I tell people it's a waste of time for you to just go to 3D NLS. You need the QRMA first. You don't may not want to get the detox, too, but I recommend it strongly because one of the big problems people don't realize is we're all being poisoned. The amount of lead, for example, in our bones is 400 times more than uh, a person, say, in, in, in Celtic, Scotland, Ireland, or Britain three 400 years ago. 
uh, and the amount of other toxins, uh, xenoestrogens, biotoxins, or seven new chemicals in, injected into the environment every day by industry, including nanoparticles in Indonesia and India that end up here, from uh, new technologies like uh, nanotechnologies that are being used illegally because they basically can't be broken down, uh, <clears throat> and they're having weird effects. That's why we see some of these things like Morgellons disease, which is probably things like our, uh, uh, agrobacterium or these uh, new uh, nano machines are basically out of control. So, uh, I, you know, in other words, let's say, follow my wisdom and you know, get a QRMA first. Uh, it will tell you where to go to get your things balanced. Uh, then start detoxing your body and then move up to the 3D NLS. I know some people want to see the picture right away of the, and it's very whiz bang, but. Uh, you, you need to know what your nutrient levels are, your vitamin levels are, you need to know all of your toxins and uh, your organ functions and hormones and so on, and you need the QRMA is by far the best machine for that. Do you think that this would uh, have an effect with the cytokine <clears throat> storm with this upcoming flu in order to neutralize it? Uh, I can tell you it's very simple to stop the cytokine storm. <clears throat> Firstly, <clears throat> if you take high dose power C, which is the Mixed mineral ascorbate is the only neutral pH vitamin C in the world. It's a calcium, magnesium, sodium, potassium ascorbate with bioperin, a black pepper extract. So it will alkalinize your body, which you can test on the QRMA machine. If you take that and Nutratrella, those two alone will make you very alkaline. We also have Nutricomplete, uh, which is the best reds, green, goji berry drink. But the two most important are Nutratrella and uh, Power C+. And we also use Nutriodine <clears throat> to stop the cytokine storm. Cytokine storm, we can also use our Allergon, which is a diamine oxidase. It's an actual enzyme we bring from a special lab in Switzerland. We have exclusive rights to it, and the Allergon will actually block the uh, interleukin 1 beta, histamines, and other cytokines. So, uh, your <clears throat> very ignorant doctors, uh, some that are smarter than the ones that are ignorant, would, would you know, like we had, doctor, uh, we had a doctor on a few years ago who's a board double boarded specialist in genetics and nephrology and he talked about the fact we can use chemotherapy <clears throat> we were to stop acute cytokine storms but basically you have to suspend someone's immune system and put them in reverse protection in a hospital because if they ever have somebody cough on them or even get a regular ordinary bacteria or virus it'll kill them so um, this particular flu that's going now and I can't tell you how bad it'll be but if it gets over three to five percent a uh, case fatality rate, it'll shut down society for six to ten weeks until it passes. And I tell people, start now on your nutraceuticals. Uh, the radiation levels, we're not getting monitored specifically, but there's a lot of citizen groups like the town of um, the towns here in California that are starting to do testing. And once they actually test and realize just how much cesium-137 and strontium-90 are present, and how much persisting uh, new, fresh, freshly made radioiodine-131 are present, plus many other isotopes, including plutonium. By the way, a lot of the plutonium is plutonium from the Cold War that was dumped at the bottom of the Barent Sea in, in the Arctic Circle by the Russians because when they built a submarine, if it went bad and started leaking, they just left the men in the submarine down there. They also, in America, have dumped lots of radioactive plutonium in these barrels and so on that will, after four or five decades, start seeping into the ocean. And there's also groundwater contamination in Rocky Flats because I took care of the Nova workers there, did the hazmat on all of the Nova workers after they did their assessment in 1997 of the Rocky Flats nuclear facility, which is the second most contaminated site on Earth besides the banking or Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. So I'm not talking about this as a peripheral journalist. I'm talking about as a top expert that can give you specific technical reasons why things are hairier than you can imagine. So, okay, so the new solar panels coming out? Yeah, if you just take our nutraceuticals to block, you're going to be fine. As it say, uh, like Bobby McFerrin's song, you know, be happy, get in prayer, leave it up to the rest, confront your neighbors, even if you get a little spittle. Uh, simple things to take and pull out the toxins, protect you, get your filtered water, don't eat Pacific uh, fish, and if you do, make sure you've got an Inspector Plus or an Inspector EXP to scan over to make sure it doesn't go click click. If it doesn't go click click, then you can put your fork in it. If it goes click click, don't eat it. And we need to get data. We need to force these politicians to give us data on fish, food, water, air, and radiation maps on a daily basis, and we're getting nowhere with them. None. Hour two 
coming up. Hour three, wide open again. Open lines. 800-259-5791.